Okay, here's uh, my paint project that I'm going to have to do instead of working on my BMW 2002. This is the 528. I replaced the rear bumper cover. I bought one at a good price online. And um, the other one is right here. See how mangled it is. Last winter, I was uh, driving in the snow and there was this uh, person behind me following too close and the person in front of me braked or actually did a stupid driving maneuver and I damaged my fender so there that is and then the stupid <coughs> who hit me in the rear uh, mess destroyed my uh, bumper cover so and you can't fix these I've tried to see if I could sort of push it out but it's shot so oh, anyway, here we go. Got the uh, 528i, and I'm going to paint it, and I'll show you how. Okay, I have uh, gone ahead and, and taped and covered my car, and um, kind of go around it. I've tried my best to seal it so that I don't get is the overspray. Just got a little more to do here. Um, the thing I hate more than anything else is uh, when you see a, a paint job and there's overspray on the exhaust system or the undercarriage. It just shows sloppy craftsmanship and uh, tells me that whoever painted the car really wasn't serious about it. Amateurs or they just have a poor work ethic and I'm uh, I do not want to be driving a car that I painted that looks like uh, somebody who didn't really put their heart into it painted it. Next step is to prep the surface, clean it. What I'm going to use is this product right here which is a, a cleaner that's designed for uh, plastic or rubber style flexible body parts I was told do not use wax and grease remover on these flexible parts because it will not come out and you'll ruin your base and I get a good adhesion when you paint so this is a something my jobber set me up with specifically for this application and um, the goal is to spray it on and let it sit. Okay, let it sit for a, a little bit. So the uh, the cleaning product is penetrating the uh, the bumper. And I'm going to come along and wipe off any residue that it's lifting up into the surface. You can see, I did drive this car after I put this on, just the way it had to be. But uh, I'm going to go through a lot of paper towels, bounty, quicker. Okay, and um, I'm going to do the same thing on this fender. I've chosen to paint the fender separate from the car uh, so I can avoid runs if possible. I'm still, you know, learning as I go. I'm no expert, I'll admit it. But thus far, with input from the professionals who look at my stuff, they give me tips. So thank you guys for humoring me as an amateur. Uh, I do enjoy this. Uh, fun to uh, do your own work, paint your products, and... and again, give your your cleaning material a chance to sort of lift, soak in and lift out any impurities, and you wipe down your, your body part, so that now on this metal panel I could use uh, wax and grease remover, but this compound is equal. I got it. I'm going to use it. If 
I was just going to do an entire metal body, I would just use wax and grease remover. Alright, I'm going to use a, a 600 grit sandpaper on this bumper. Plastic bumper, it's been primed, but the prime paint will not have a adhesion or teeth to the coat I'm going to put on top of it, so I'm going to sand it to get the teeth so that I'll get the paint to stick. Now you notice that I went ahead and used my uh, cleaning compound first. If I were to go ahead and sand and then use the cleaning compound, what I'm doing is I'm sanding in any kind of debris and impurities into the substrate. So you want to clean it before you sand it so you don't grind in any impurities. Okay, I have sanded down both components, both pieces, whatever. Temperature is about 55 to 60 in here. I want to make sure that it is it is fall and so it's been cool. I'm going to make sure that the metal and everything else is up to par. Next thing I'm going to use is Bulldog. Uh, it's an adhesion promoter which will uh, allow it to uh, have a better uh, surface for the paint to adhere to. It's a recommended product. I thought I'd give it a try. So that's our next step. Okay, now comes the primer time. And I'm using um, PPG epoxy primer and it's catalyst here's the the primer and here's the catalyst da -da -da -da. and uh, whenever you get any kind of a primer base or clear make sure you get your fact sheet with it it tells you at what pressure or it tells you the the mixing ratio these guys are two parts primer to one part catalyst and it tells you the air pressure to use at your gun at your the gun, which I've uh, been uh, sort of playing with to make sure I get the right air pressure. I've got my little uh, pressure valve uh, needle right here. It tells me how much pressure I have at the gun. Recommends uh, 40 psi for the uh, primer, and it also tells you the flash time before you can put on the next coat or the base. So I'm going to mix it, and I'm also going to get into uh, a uh, airtight suit. And I've got a fresh air system I'm going to be using because I don't want to get liver or brain damage. It's a, something I've learned after painting before my uh, liver enzymes were up, probably because I was poisoning myself with uh, the type of paints that you, uh, you use here. Case in point, if you look at this filter right here, you can see how much particulate is captured in the filter right there. That's the hard stuff from the clear coat. And you don't want that in your lungs or it'll really screw you up. But there's so much uh, dissolved uh, chemical vapor which gets through these kind of filters. So you really do need a fresh air system if you're going to do this a lot. Uh, it's just unless you want to wind up getting Alzheimer's at the age of 50, which I've heard has happened to some people. Okay, I'm getting to shoot the epoxy and then go into the base and the clear. I wanted to emphasize that I've got a, a airtight suit on and a, a plastic underneath the baklava on my head and airtight goggles and I'm going to be using an oxygen supply like this with the uh, oxygen running out this door and to uh, a source of clean air outside. It's a hobbyist model. So safety is, is, is number one, like I said. So I'm getting ready to shoot.
bumper is painted, clear is hardened, and um, <clears throat> fortunately there are some dust nibs in there. And I also missed some, I was a little thin on some basin areas, but it's always good to practice on something like a bumper cover instead of the whole car. Now I'm going to wet sand and polish. Okay, sports fans, uh, I'm using a 2000 grit, then a 1000 grit paper with uh, water and a touch of soap, and then the 3M polishing wheel and compound. This area right down here I, it was my test area to get rid of the orange peel, and it worked out pretty good. Here's some pretty dramatic orange peel, which I'm going to work on next to sort of make it match up to the original look of the car. So, we'll see how that goes as we polish, sorry, sand, wet sand and polish the clear. Okay, I'm going to tell you, this is blowing my mind. This is the area I just polished after wet sanding. And if you follow it, watch it go into the orange peel. Orange peel. It's amazing how much you can work that orange peel out. I am just stunned at the quality that you get from wet sanding and polishing. Just got to be careful not to cut through the polish and the, the, the real Bennett, the real test area, these curves, that's what always stands out to me. I'm just very pleased and I'll tell you last night after I was painting all day I had dust nibs in this and I was depressed. I'm thinking this ain't gonna work. Why bother? Well, I was wrong. So much can be done in the color sanding and the polishing. I'm just floored. Okay, well, this is phase two of uh, painting and getting the 528 back to its normal state. By the way, there's my 69 2002, which is running well. That was my dad's. I went to, with him to buy that car. Anyway, back on this one. Um, Got that uh, rear bumper cover painted. Looks fantastic. And when I was painting the bumper cover, I also opted to uh, paint a, a replacement fender that I bought that had been damaged in the winter accident as well, right there. And so what I'm gonna do now, I went ahead and painted this with the two-stage uh, epoxy base, three coats clear, then I wet color sanded it and uh, wound up buffing it partly with a mechanical buffer and partly by hand because of the little grooves I didn't want to burn the clear out you cut through that clear very easily with a mechanical buffer compounding wheel so anyway I'm going to replace this son bitch and be done with it I'm so tired of dealing with this messed up fender one of the things I am going to use when working on this fender is the Bentley manual. There's actually two volumes for this 
E39 BMW. Enormous car. You need an enormous service manual in order to work on it. And here we have front fender removal and installation. There's a God in heaven. Thank you. Okay, uh, get loosen up all the bolts and off she comes. Look at there. Oh, well, here we go. Here's the car without the fender. There were one, two, three, four of these 10 millimeter sized sheet metal screws holding the fender on there. Two major bolts, two major bolts that held the hood up, hood hinge. They were, I think, 15s. So I had to support the hood lest it flop around. And these guys right here are Torx. The Torx are down there. And then we've got one more sheet metal screw right here. That's it. So, wow. Not as hard as I thought. The thing I had to do was pull out the uh, inner fender shroud. Inner fender shroud. So that... Uh, I could access the sheet metal screws underneath it. These are wonderful applications. The older model BMWs, like this one from 1969, didn't have inner fender shrouds. As a result, you get a lot of debris that built up and then you get the rusting right down in here and you just eat the fender up. So, glad BMW got their act together. Oh, okay, the car. I wash the car. I am done. You can see this bumper cover is complete. And uh, no orange peel. Nice, nice factory match on that one. And down here, the front left fender, which was damaged, has been replaced. And again, a nice clear coat that has been matched. So, we are back to normal. Hello.